Hey everyone, Jonathan here. Welcome back to the Making a Game course where we're going to create Pong. But before we create Pong, I thought it would be a good idea to create Console Pong. And what is Console Pong, you might ask? Well, I am certainly glad you did. Console Pong is going to be a good introduction for you into coding within C Sharp and Unity and Mono Develop, rather than having you jump right into making things move. So we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna start off nice and slow and easy. So if you're a complete beginner, uh, this is gonna be very, very good for you. So right within our project, uh, what we're going to first do is go create a script. Now there's two ways of doing this. I'm gonna go into the scripts folder and I'm just going to right click in here, go to create, and go create a C sharp script. And I'm just going to name this console pong. Now, make sure this is one all one word here. And uh, there is, you do proper title case, so a capital C and a capital P, and then just hit enter. Now, if you double click this, it's going to open in Mono Develop or in Visual Basic if you didn't change that setting. And this is what you're going to see. Well, actually, you're going to see it a little bit differently here. Uh, you're not going to have this black background. If you want to change this, and I suggest doing so just because it's easier on the eyes, you go into Tools, Options, and then scroll down to uh, under Text Editor, Syntax Highlighting, and change your color scheme. I'm using Oblivion. Uh, test them out, find one you like. Okay, so this is Mono Develop, and this is where we write code. Now the first thing, well first of all, I'm going to tell you for now, don't worry about this stuff up here. We're just going to be looking at these things down here. Now these squiggly brackets are very important. These basically contain code. Uh, they're kind of like file folders on a computer. Anything you write between these two lines of squiggly code is contained within an area and we can call that. Now where you see this void start, this means this code, whatever is in here, is going to be initialized as soon as the program is run. And what's here within void update is going to be initialized over and over over every single frame. Now it's one thing to say it, it's, it's another thing to show you. So I'm just going to write in here, print, open bracket, quotation mark, let's play console, let's, play, let's spell it correctly, Pong, close quotation, close bracket, and then I put a semicolon here at the end of my line, and I hit Control S to save. Now, let's see what would happen if we would run the program, and I'll tell you exactly what will happen. Uh, absolutely nothing will happen, but what we do want to see is this code that we just show, we just wrote here showing up under console. Now, the reason we're not seeing anything is because our script is not attached to anything. So what we have to do here in our scene is create a game object to attach that script to. So there's two ways to do this. We can either right click here in the hierarchy and go create empty, or we can go here under game object and go cl and click create empty. And that creates a game object in our scene. Now if we look here in the inspector, we can attach this script onto that game object by just dra dragging it and dropping it here. And we see it shows up uh, here saying console pong script. Now if we look into the console and run this again, we're going to see here it says let's play console pong. So that's great. We know that's working. Now let's take a look and write let's let's move this let's play console pong and put that in the update and see what happens when we but and remember you have to hit control s so you have to save your script every time or else the changes won't go through. So let's hit play. And we can see it just does it over and over and over again. And if we click this click this collapse button, it puts it all in one line and it shows us here on the right how many times that line is running. So you can see it runs very, very quickly and this can change depending on your computer speed. So this is our introduction to using the console in Unity. Now, let's actually write a small game here. So I'm gonna move this print statement back here and say, let's play console pong and then we're going to write another print statement and we're going to say the ball is now in play who does it go who does it go to first and close quotation bracket semicolon 
Now we're going to do an if statement. Now if statements are very important. They are conditionals and they allow us to have control over our program. So this is how you do an if statement. You write the word if, then you have an open bracket, a close bracket, then you have an open squiggly bracket and a close squiggly bracket because we're going to put code in between. Now whenever you see this red highlights, it doesn't mean you have a spelling error. This isn't Microsoft Word. That means something is wrong with your code. And in this case, it's quite simple. Uh, it just means that we haven't uh, put a condition in here yet. So I'm going to say if input dot get key down, and this is how we recognize a input from our keyboard. Now I'm going to do open another bracket and say key code. And if you hit tap, it will just auto complete dot. And we, if we hit, uh, it's going to show us a drop down list of all the, the keys on our keyboard. So I'm going to say, uh, P, key code P, and I'm going to put another closing bracket here. And we see the squiggly line goes away, things light up, and you have to make sure you have the right number of opening brackets and closing brackets, both squiggly and non-squiggly. Oh, and I forgot one thing here. I'm going to say print uh, press P if it goes to the player or C if it goes to the computer. Now, if we pr do this here, we can say print the ball goes to the, who do we say, P for the player, the player, and the player blocks. Yay, good for the player. Okay, now do you want to test if this works? It's good to be lean and test things constantly. So let's hit play. And if we press the button P, we're going to see nothing actually happens. And the reason for that is because in here, in MonoDevelop, we've already passed this if statement. Uh, it, it ran it once because this uh, initialized as soon as the program started up, and the if statement had its chance. It's gone. So what we need to do is we need to move this if statement here and put it in the update function. Now, if we go back here and run this again, it's going to be listening for us to press the P button. And so if we press P, we can see it says the ball goes to the player and the player blocks. And if we press P again, it's going to keep running that over and over. So that's a problem we'll tackle in a bit. For now, let's just finish up this if statement. So we also want to have a chance, uh, we want to take care of it if the C button is pressed. So we can say here, else if, and then what we can do to save ourselves some time is we can just copy this bit over. And we can say, instead of key code dot P, we're going to say key code dot C. And now we're going to open squiggly bracket, close squiggly bracket, and we're going to write a different print statement and say, the ball goes to the computer and it scores because the com computer is a noob. Okay, and let's just test those cases out again. So if we hit P, it goes to the player and we block, and if we hit C, the ball goes to the computer and it scores because the computer is a noob. So that's great. This is, uh, we know that this is working, and this is our start to playing console Pong. Uh, let's see, how are we doing for time? Getting a little bit up there. So I'm just going to cut it here, and we'll go into the next uh, video where we're going to start using some variables like integers and booleans to add more control into this game. So this is great. We know this is now working. And let's just review quickly what we've gone over here. So if you press the way to type in print code is simply print open bracket, open quotation mark, whatever you want to type. This is called a string and then close quotation mark, close bracket. And you always put a semicolon to end your line of code. Uh, the exception is if you're using these squiggly brackets and these are used to contain and call specific bits of code. They're sort of like file folders on a computer, as I said. And being case sensitive is very important when you're doing code. Uh, if I had typed capital P with the print, it wouldn't work. And if you maybe had an error, that's something you might have done. You might have put capital P. You have to actually be lowercase in this instance. So here's a challenge for you. Uh, write some additional print statements in the start and update methods to test the differences. Uh, maybe test that input as well, just to see what that's all about.
So pause the video and give that a go. Okay, welcome back. How did you do? Uh, one thing I'll just show you quickly here. Uh, there is this difference. If I just got rid of this word get key, or get, if, if I got rid of the word down and just wrote get key, let's see what the, the difference here would be. So I can go hit back, hit play. Now, if I hit the P button in Unity, you're going to see, look at those numbers going up. It just recognizes that the key is held down, but not pressed down. Whereas if I hold the C button, it's just going to call it once. And that's the difference between get key and get key down. Anyways, that's long enough for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you're getting a lot out of this. I will see you in the next one.